Autoimmunity happens when the immune system overreacts to the body, attempting to destroy parts of the body with pro-inflammatory cells. So far, there are close to 100 recognized autoimmune diseases and an additional 40 chronic health conditions that research suggests that could have an autoimmune component. And in time, as we learn how more diseases operate, I am sure, sadly, that more diseases will be classified as autoimmune in nature. Autoimmune diseases are now the third leading cause of death and disease in the world. But just because something is ubiquitous doesn't make it normal or mean that we can't do something about it. In America alone, it's estimated that 50 million people have been diagnosed with an autoimmune disease. In most cases, the official diagnostic criteria are that the patient's immune system has already destroyed a significant amount of their body. For instance, there has to be 90% destruction of the adrenal glands to be diagnosed with autoimmune adrenal disease or Addison's disease. There also has to be major destruction of the neurological and digestive systems to be diagnosed with neurological autoimmunity like multiple sclerosis, MS, or gut autoimmunity like celiac disease. The amount of autoimmune inflammation attack did not happen overnight. It's the end stage of the larger autoimmune inflammation spectrum. My focus is on addressing the causes of the inflammation before the patient reaches the end stage level of destruction. There are three main stages of the autoimmune inflammation spectrum. Stage one is silent autoimmunity. There are positive antibody labs here, but no noticeable symptoms. Stage two is autoimmune reactivity, where there are positive antibody labs and the patient is experiencing symptoms. And stage three, autoimmune disease. There's enough body destruction to be diagnosed and loads of potential symptoms. In addition to people with diagnosed autoimmune conditions, in my functional medicine center, I see many people in this second stage on the spectrum, not sick enough to have been slapped with a diagnosis code, but nonetheless feeling the effects of autoimmune reactivity. People living somewhere on this inflammation spectrum often go from doctor to doctor with a pile of labs and medications, yet really little to show for it. These patients are often essentially told, well, you will probably get lupus in a few years, come back then. When you know what you're up against, you can do something about it. My concern as a functional medicine practitioner is about proactive steps to optimize your health. What can we do today to optimize our health, rather than simply waiting for end-stage disease? When someone is diagnosed with an autoimmune condition, they have already been experiencing autoimmune inflammation for an average of about 10 years. New studies point to what many in functional medicine have been saying for decades, that food reactivity, like gluten sensitivity, is really one end of a larger inflammation spectrum with autoimmune diseases like celiac disease on the other end. Remember, there has to be significant destruction of your intestinal microvilli to be diagnosed as having celiac disease. But many people with celiac disease don't even really experience severe gastrointestinal symptoms. Research is now finding that celiac disease can manifest as neurological symptoms, such as anxiety, depression, and brain fog, as well as skin problems. This information should change the way we look at mental health. We should at least be seeing whether or not we can rule out autoimmune components in evaluating these issues. It's been estimated that only 5% of people with celiac are ever diagnosed. There's an estimated 3 million Americans with celiac disease who have no idea that they have it. It's also been estimated that at least 6% of us have gluten sensitivity or FODMAP intolerance because of chronic gut problems like small intestinal bacterial overgrowth or SIBO. By the way, FODMAPs is an acronym for fermentable sugars found in grains and dairy, in legumes, some fruits and vegetables like onions and garlic. Just because someone is experiencing autoimmune reactivity or pervasive inflammation doesn't mean their condition will get to the severe point of diagnosis. Millions spend their lives stuck in autoimmune reactivity, being thrown from specialist to specialist.